Hello, Oslade Sink here. Basil from Bastel is a stereo time-based effect module. It is capable of traditional delay and echo sounds as you might expect, but through its wide-ranging controls, CV, and a selection of parameters which really modify the behaviour of the two delay lines, you can find chorus, flanging, comb filtering, pseudo-reverbs, lo-fi effects and more, and all in stereo. Basil is built upon the same hardware platform as Bastel's Pizza Oscillator module. And indeed, if you own a pizza, you can flash the Basil firmware onto it for free and get to exploring a new sound world. In this video, I've aimed for the first part to act as a kind of video manual going over each of the features in turn. That's followed by a number of example patches, which can hopefully show the module in context and show some more of its versatility. Basil is a module with a lot of hidden depth, so this video is predictably pretty long. To help you navigate to the material that you're interested in, I've added extensive chapter markers, so feel free to jump around to find the info and sounds that you're after. Before we get to know Basil in some more depth, in the interest of transparency, Basil provided the module to me for free in order to make some videos on it, but I haven't otherwise been paid for this video, and Basil haven't asked for or been given any editorial oversight. As always, I only show stuff on the channel that I think is cool and that it's worth talking about. Right, let's check out Basil. Before we jump into any of the sounds, we should just quickly talk about the input and output for the signal flow purposes. Uh, you have two inputs, a left and a right, and two outputs, a left and a right. And that's because Basil is a stereo module, and in the truest sense, the delay architecture is actually duplicated. There's a delay that sits on the left side and a delay which sits on the right side. What goes into the left input goes through the left delay and what goes into the right input goes through the right delay. We can introduce crosstalk between those two delays to do all sorts of stereo stuff, which we'll definitely be getting into, but it is genuinely a stereo delay. Um, if you don't plug anything into the right input, the uh, left input is normal to the right input. Uh, so for the purposes of the demonstrations, um, certainly in the sort of video manual part of the video, I'll probably just have one input going in here just because it's a little bit easier to hear the crosstalk stuff happening um, when we get to that side of things. So let's put a little sequence from pizza going into Basil here, seems appropriate. So at the moment our dry wet slider is set fully dry, which means that at the moment we're just hearing the dry sound coming straight from pizza, but if I turn up towards wet a little bit, we start to hear what Basil is adding in terms of a delay. Now I'm going to try and work through the module in a sort of logical top to bottom fashion, but there's a lot on this module where things further down affect what's going on further up. So there'll be a little bit of jumping up and down, maybe. Uh, we'll see how we get on. Uh, one thing that I also want to highlight um, right at this point, and we'll dive into it a bit more later, is that every control on Basil um, is C viable, um, not necessarily all at the same time, uh, but any uh, of the controls which are present on the face of it can be assigned to the control CV. Uh, so we can um, CV the wet dry, for example, as well as anything else. So with a time-based, delay-based effect, it's probably worth starting up at this big delay knob at the top. And as on pizza, uh, this knob can do multiple different things depending on the status of various uh, button presses. We'll start at the kind of the most basic side of things though, which is with the time light selected here, the delay knob is going to affect the delay time. And the first thing you'll probably notice um, compared to a lot of um, delay devices is that the delay knob in time mode appears to work backwards in that as we turn it up, our delays get shorter. And this uh, threw me a little bit when I first started using the module because it is backwards to most uh, delay effects that I've used, but it does make sense when we start to think of it in terms of uh, CVing the delay amount. Uh, if you stop thinking about this as delay time and more in terms of repeat frequency, and you think about that in terms of volts per octave, a higher 
voltage would create a higher frequency of repeats. This becomes really, really important when you start to think about um, car plus strong type uh, synthesis, where actually you want a higher delay value to be a um, higher frequency and a shorter delay. But we can see here that we have a range on the delay knob which goes right into audio range repeats. You can start to hear chorusing at the top there, which we can certainly be doing. So we're going to have to do our first jump in terms of um, jumping down the interface to talk about the time here. And that is that the longest delay here seems to be pretty short. Um, and uh, what we can find on Basil is that we can affect the overall range of the delay time by making use of this button here. So if I tap this button now, it's going to put us into half mode. And now our delays are twice as long, or the speed is half for the repeats. This gives us a different range of delays to work with. You might also be able to hear slightly that the quality of the delays is now slightly darker. And that's because it's running the delay at half the sample rate. Personally, I like delays getting darker, so that works fine for me. Uh, if we want to go even longer, however, we can long press this button and that puts us into a different range of delay times. And now you can definitely hear the effect of that lower sample rate with a little bit of crunchiness happening in the delays there, which I really, really like actually. And we can tap this again to go to a different range. So that's uh, the um, uh, shorter side of the longer delays. And that's the very longest one where you can hear a lot more of that grit. I think that's actually a really lovely sound, so, uh, yeah. Now, this uh, selector here is also seeable by the control knob. We'll do that a little bit later. But because with each of these different uh, selections, we are either halving or doubling the delay time, we also get these nice octave jumps. which are really cool. <laughs> Lovely. Um, so I'll come back into the standard range here. And let's talk about the uh, next thing that this knob can do, um, which is if we tap this again, we go into the stereo spread mode. Now, if I turn the delay knob down in the stereo uh, spread mode, we hear what we were hearing anyway, because that's how I had it set. Now, as I turn the stereo control up, however, you can start to hear some stereo widening happening. And what's happening as I do this is um, one of the delay lines, the left one, uh, I think, is getting shorter, and the right one is getting longer. So the delays are coming out of sync with each other on the left and right hand side, which gives us this lovely stereo widening effect. And as we push it further, we get to the point where we're kind of not just getting a stereo widening, but introducing different uh, rhythms to the delays that are happening there as well. Dun, dun, dun. Now this is not ping pong, 
we can do ping pong, we'll get to that in just a second. This is just the delay times of the left and right being set differently. When we get to the furthest here, you can probably hear that one of the delays is now twice as long as the other one. Which is cool. Just bring that back down to uh, mono just for a second here. Uh, and we'll talk about the final uh, adjustment that we can make here. If we long press, we go into fine mode, and this gives us much finer control over the delay time. And again, this works the same way around as the uh, delay uh, time normally, in that shorter delays are found further up. So I think this gives us a range of uh, halving the, the time, I think. Da -da, da -da, da -da, da -da, da -da. Yeah, something like that. So uh, just coming back into the main time mode here, we should also talk about the sync control. Uh, so I'm just gonna grab a 16th note uh, gate from PAMS and plug it in to our sync control. And if there is a gate signal uh, detected on the sync control, the delay time is now going to be quantized to that sync signal. So we should now get jumps between different tempo synced. Delay times. And of course we can affect that um, overall range by going into half mode or one of the longer ranges. Now, one of the really, really neat things about the sync mode is that the fine control still operates independently of the sync signal. So we can still take this um, uh, synchronized uh, time synced uh, delay here, come into fine mode and offset it So it's still tempo synced, but we're getting a different sort of pattern and vibe with it. So you can find all these sort of shuffled and sort of slightly wonky delay times, which are still synchronized, they're happening periodically, but they're not sort of quantized to the grid so much. Yeah, so that's a really, really nice feature here. It also means that we can modulate the fine amount even in synchronized mode to get some chorusing effects as well, which we'll get to in a little while. So perhaps we'll leave the um, synchronization in here just for a second, and we should talk uh, about the feedback control here. So the feedback control, as you um, might imagine, is going to introduce feedback into the delay loop, which allows us then to have echoes, delays, which go on for longer. And it's a uh, two-way control. If we push this um, positive, we can hear that those delays are starting to roll over in a way that you would maybe expect. And we can push this right up to the top here and we'll start to get that rolling over of the delay. And it starts to get gritty. <laughs> and, <laughs> yes, 
But what you'll notice, hopefully, is that although we're starting to get this over <laughs> overloading uh, delay, things are getting crunchy and nasty. They're not getting really, really loud. And that's because inside the feedback loop, I'll turn that back down now. Uh, inside the feedback loop on Basil, there is actually a uh, compressor and uh, distortion or overdrive or clipper or saturator, uh, which means that uh, past a certain point, the delays are not going to get louder and overload the sort of the, the, the DAC of it. So we're not going to get that sort of really nasty breaking up distortion. It's actually quite a fun, almost, dare I say, analog sounding uh, distortion instead, which is lovely. Now, um, as I said, this is a two-way control. Um, if we turn it to the left, what we get is ping pong. So what's happening now is that rather than um, feeding back within a single delay line, uh, the right delay line will feed back into the left, and then the left feedback uh, delay will feed back into the right. So we get the signal passing back and forth as we go. So this is our sort of classic delay um, for ping pong. It's just always a lovely thing. And again, we can push this to the point where it starts to overload and bloom out. But again, we don't get to the point where it is completely overbearing. It's sort of crunching up inside itself instead. And again, quite, what I think is quite a pleasant way. Um, we should also probably just quickly talk about the um, wet dry here. Uh, this is a wet dry mix in that at the far right here, we're just hearing the delay and not the original signal at all. You can hear that that um, mono from the center is gone. So you can use Basil as a straight uh, send effect as well as an insert effect, which is always really, really useful. If we're uh, talking about the feedback knob, we should probably also talk about this button here, which in many ways is one of the most powerful buttons on Basil. So if I tap this button here, what this is going to do is it's going to freeze what is currently inside our delay buffer. So you can hear that our uh, input is continuing to play through, but it's no longer uh, impacting on what is going into the delay line. What is inside the delay line is now frozen inside that and indeed if we take away our, our input altogether we can hear that still going. Now in freeze mode a couple of the controls work in a different way. The first thing is that the feedback knob will have no effect over the uh, frozen delay line. Um, so that's one thing. Uh, obviously dry wet still operates as it should do. What's really interesting however is what is going on with the delay control. Because although it sounds like we are just capturing this one little snippet of time, as we move the delay knob around, instead of getting that smearing, we're just going to be lengthening and shortening the delay line. And in fact, if we go further back, we'll find that the rest of our sound that was sat inside the delay line is still there which allows us functionally to go back in time a little bit, which is, you know, kind of lovely. A bit of time travel, why not? Um, this will also uh, still be affected by the speed, but this will still be changing the uh, sample rate. So rather than getting a shorter snippet of sound, if we change this from currently on half back up to full speed, we get a double time frozen loop. And if we go into the long range mode, 
will be able to drop it down by an octave or two. There's some other stuff further down here which we will get to that allows you to do even more interesting stuff with these frozen loops. So the stereo control still has an effect over the sound as well. The delay lines on each side now are different lengths. As does the fine control, of course. Basically doing what it always did, but now without smearing the sound. Now it should be noted that um, this operates slightly differently if you have a sync signal coming in here. So let's unfreeze this and let our sound die away. We'll give ourselves an input again. And I'll pop the sync control in here as well. <laughs> let things uh, stabilize. There we go. Uh, so if we freeze the delay line again, the input out again just so we can hear our frozen signal. Our delay control now is going to, um, now that it's synchronized, jump to things in a synchronized fashion. So we can get these tempo synced snippets of whatever was going into <laughs> yes, uh, these tempo synced snippets of what was going into uh, Basil at the time. How can you not love this? Now, in synchronized mode, as far as I can tell, the stereo control no longer has an effect. I don't know whether that's intentional or whether that's that's something that might be affected in a firmware update. It would be really good if we could get tempo synced movements in the stereo there as well with frozen loops, but as of the firmware that I have installed on this, uh, that is not the case. Uh, we can of course still make these half time and quarter time as well. Which is really good fun as well. Pop that through some uh, some reverb for a good time I reckon. Hello, Oscillator Sync from the future here. I have been editing this video and I've realized I've managed to completely delete a section where I talked about the lo-fi mode, which is illegal because I love the lo-fi mode on Basil. So what does the lo-fi mode actually do? Well, it disables the anti-aliasing filters within the delay. What does that mean? Well, when it comes to digital audio, the highest frequency that you're able to sample accurately will be the frequency which is half your sample rate. So if your sample rate is 10 kilohertz, the highest frequency which you can accurately filter is 5 kilohertz. If you try to sample any frequency above that, you will get what's called aliasing. Um, and there's a reason for this happening, but what happens in, in practice is that it will start to introduce frequencies that weren't really there um, because of the inability to, to sample the frequencies that high. So what happens in digital uh, audio is that we have a low pass filter, which is placed before that frequency, that half the sample rate called the Nyquist frequency. And that 
filter basically stops any audio coming in that would cause aliasing. So that's all good if you're trying to capture something uh, accurately. But what if I told you that aliasing can sound really, really cool? And as a result, it's really nice that on Pizza we have the ability to remove that anti-aliasing filter and get some of that sparkly new frequency content introduced. So you turn on the lo-fi mode by long pressing this here. Now, if you listen very carefully, there will be a slight difference in the uh, delay repeats now, but it's gonna be very, very subtle uh, because at the moment we have our speed set to fullest. So we'll just turn it off and on again. So that's lo-fi. You can probably hear that it's slightly darker with the aliasing filters um, in place, but you're not hearing that much of a difference. And that's because we're running at the full sample rate here. If we go to half speed here, not only are we getting a longer delay, but we're actually running at half the sample rate, which means that the aliasing filter, the anti-aliasing filter, sorry, is uh, now further down, which is also why things are sounding darker. So it's not just that uh, we've got a longer delay, it's also darker. If we turn on lo-fi mode now, you can hear a little bit more high end and maybe a little bit of fluff at the very top there. And that's because now that we've halved the sample rate, the frequencies which cause aliasing are uh, happening at a lot lower down, so there's much more chance for aliasing to occur. Now, if we continue along this uh, path, so I'll turn the lo-fi off, and we go to the uh, longer range here, again, you can hear we've got much darker now because our anti-aliasing filters have to be set uh, that much lower for aliasing to stop. It's in this longer range mode that you're gonna hear a lot more of the effects of the lo-fi here. So this is without it. And you can hear how that sound has opened up from the top end, but you've also got this ringing, almost bell-like quality to the repeats. lo-fi mode off. You can actually hear some of the aliasing uh, happening even with the lo-fi mode off in these longer ranges because I suspect the filter is not uh, precisely set or isn't a steep enough curve. That's not a problem, it sounds cool. And if we go into the very longest range here, things will get much darker already hear some of that aliasing still again because the filter design not being absolutely perfect but if we go into lo-fi mode now there's just beautiful glistening ringing aura that sits alongside everything and it's introducing all of these glitchy, ringing, sparkly frequencies which weren't there, especially on those high notes. And the way it affects the reverb trail that's sat inherently within this sample as well is really, really lovely. I have to admit that uh, I spend a lot of time with lo-fi mode just left on when I'm playing with Basil on my own. And we'll get to this uh, a bit later, but we need to have the ability to then post filter some of these frequencies to accentuate them or, or dial them back a little bit, but we'll get to that later. Yeah, 
so that's the lo-fi mode. Uh, back to what it was I was talking about before this jump cut. So let's get to this tantalizing space section here. So what space allows us to do is introduce three different additional uh, processes inside the delay line. We have blur, which allows us to smear the delays. We have filter, which allows us to filter them. We have taps, which allows us to introduce additional taps inside the delay. Now, before we get into these, um, one thing I want to highlight is that this space mode can work in two different ways. There's the default mode, where you can only have one of each of these different effects active at any time. So as you switch between them, uh, so if I was using blur and I switched to filter, um, you'd lose the blur settings and you just move on to just filter settings and so on. Um, that's fine <laughs> if you want to work that way. Personally, I think that's a little bit limiting. Uh, so there is what is also called the hyperspace mode, which is how I have this setup at the moment. And to enable this, uh, if you just hold down uh, the speed and freeze buttons when you turn the, uh, the unit on, uh, that will enable or, or disable if it was previously enabled hyperspace mode. And what that means is that you keep the previous settings for each of these different things as you move through the different modes, which personally I think should be the default mode. There we go. So let's talk about the first mode here, blur. And, and actually with all of these space effects, uh, they do two different things. Uh, this is not zero at the bottom and maximum at the top. It's zero in the middle and then two different flavors of each of these space effects going either way. So what blur does is it adds diffusion to the delay sounds. So um, you'll be able to hear that. Pretty clearly as we move that uh, to the left you can hear that the delay there is getting smeared now uh, if we move this to the left the diffusion is happening at the input so the first delay um, gets um, uh, diffused and then it just goes into the delay line as normal so we get a diffused delay that then sits inside the uh, delay. And actually, if we push this all the way to the end, we also get a bit more stereo spread as well. Uh, if we move this to the right, the diffusion happens inside the feedback loop, meaning that each delay is going to become more and more diffuse as we go, essentially. So that first delay is still kind of fairly clean, but as it carries on and feeds back more and more, we get a more diffuse, dare I say, dreamy sound. Let's mix our original sound back in there a little bit more. Now this kind of idea of diffusing uh, delay taps is kind of where you start to get into reverb territory, especially if we start to bring our time down a little bit and our feedback up. We start to get these quite dreamy pseudo reverb sounds oh yeah and it's lovely when we start to move that delay time around which of course we could do with CV as well Beautiful. 
And of course, uh, changing our speed here is also going to give us different kind of uh, flavours based upon that sort of aliasing and anti-aliasing. So if we go to... Our lowest range here. It's just lush. This is in ping pong mode as well. And we could add more stereo offset there. And put it into lo-fi mode. <laughs> Let's get this glistening swamp around our sound. freeze it. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Sorry, I'm getting distracted by um, by cool sounds. So that's Blur. Uh, let's let that feedback disappear. So the next one here is Filter. And Filter is uh, fairly straightforward. Uh, this places a filter in the feedback loop. And as we go to the left, the filter is a low pass filter, so our repeats get darker. lets you have that sort of longer feedback time without it getting in the way so much. Very pleasant. So each of our um, repeats was getting darker there. And going to the right gives us, as you might imagine, a high pass filter. So taking that low end out of those repeats. Again, getting them out of the way in a different way. Feels like it gets a little bit resonant when you push it towards the top as well. Lovely with the sound, it gives that sort of toy piano kind of vibe. Uh, so the last one here is taps. And what taps does for us is introduce additional delay taps within the delay line, turning it into a multi-tap delay. Uh, as we move it to the left, we can hear those taps being introduced and we get a much denser delay sound. You know, almost getting some of that reverb vibe at longer delay times. Ah, isn't that lovely? So we get this very lush, dense delay. Uh, moving it to the right does the same thing essentially, but rather than introducing all of the taps, it only introduces the even division taps. So we get a slightly different flavor, less dense, more obvious, more obviously delay -y, I think. Still very lush and lovely though. And the uh, wonderful thing about having this in hyperspace mode is we can start to bring all of these things together. So we can 
move to this more lush multi-tap sound. We can start to diffuse those multi-taps and maybe darken everything a little bit. Increase that feedback again. into long range mode. <laughs> Go into lo-fi mode. pass rather low pass. Yeah. Uh, and this is really where you start to turn Basil into anything you want, really. <laughs> Okay, let's talk a little bit about CV. When it comes to talking about the CV control on Basil, probably the most obvious place to start is with the delay volts proactive input here. Uh, so I'll just start a sequence, just a single note going, just so it's really easy to hear what's going on. Cool. So, um, if I just plumb in a LFO to the Volts Proctive input here, we can hear that we're getting quite wide variations here. So I'm just going to try and attenuate this LFO to try and get more of a gentle wobble to our delay time. So my attenuator is almost all the way down, but we're still getting quite big movements here. Cool movements, but quite big movements. So I can barely get it to the point where I'm getting that kind of wobble. And the reason is this input isn't really for that. If we want to have fine control over the delay time and get that sort of more modulation thing going on, uh, we have other ways that we can do that. Uh, we should also note here that the uh, delay here is being added to whatever the delay knob is currently set to. It's not overriding it. However, what is quite interesting about this control, as opposed to a lot of other delay units, is that this is volts per octave. So we can put a pitched sequence into it. And get pitched and delay sounds sequenced. <laughs> as a result, which is very cool. And we can also freeze what's going on in there as well. Turn it into a, an oscillator. Uh, essentially, I guess this is uh, a, a wavetable synth at this point, kind of. 
Yeah, so this control is for bigger, wider movements rather than such small modifications. <laughs> Sorry. Um, if we just come back, calm down. If we just come back to the um, LFO just for a second here, but we're moving things around, I'll open up the attenuator a little bit. Uh, like so. And if I just plug in the sync here as well, I've just got 16th notes here. The LFO will now be moving things around, but it will still stay synced as well. which gives us a, a different kind of vibe going on here where things are still uh, staying at those sort of octave ranges. Although it does still slew towards them, so you still get some movement going on in there as well. So the next input we should probably talk about is the feedback input, which, as you might imagine, gives you control over the feedback amount. Uh, before we uh, plug anything in here, however, uh, you should be made aware that if you are loading Basil's firmware onto a pizza, um, which you can do, uh, this on the pizza is the pulse output, not an input. So if you are putting Basil onto pizza, uh, yeah, uh, you will need to um, flip the module over and there is a jumper which you need to move across. It's labelled uh, CV4 pulse. Uh, the manual shows you which position it needs to be in. Uh, this prototype uh, that was sent to me had it in the wrong position and for a while I thought that the feedback didn't work and it was just the jumper position. So uh, worth noting there. So uh, if we plumb into the feedback here, I've just got an LFO going again. make the delay a little bit shorter. You can hear that our feedback amount is being modulated. Which is a, quite a nice thing because it, for these shorter delays, makes for quite a menacing vibe. Now, um, yes, you may um, expect possibly that the uh, feedback control here, uh, given that it has a center dent, is going to act like an uh, attenuator maybe, and if we turn it down, we get more of the ping pong happening instead. Uh, but that's not actually the case. Um, the feedback CV is going to add to, or take away from, if it's negative, whatever is currently set on this knob here. So if you want to have um, uh, the ping pong feedback fading in and out in this way, for example, uh, you will need to invert your CV so that it's going negative instead. So if I just quickly uh, do a tiny bit of inversion here, Uh, now you should hear that we're getting that sort of creeping feedback happening in the ping pong mode instead. 
but you will need to invert the CV if you want to send the knob that way. Alternatively, you could set this up to full and send an appropriate amount of positive CV to push it back towards zero, I suppose. Um, but yes, this is not an attenuverter. Uh, it is um, uh, just a straight up knob in this mode. Crikey. The next CV input is the one that's sort of outside of the main uh, control panel here, which is the one which relates to the space control. Uh, so again, let me put a uh, LFO into there. And this will uh, give you CV control over whatever this is currently set to. So at the moment it's on blur mode. A bit more feedback so we can hear it. So you can hear that the diffuseness of our feedback is getting shifted around and modified. And if we change this over to filter mode, we'll hear that we're getting high past. Now, in the same way as with our feedback CV, this is going to be adding or subtracting from whatever is currently set here. So if you want to move the slider or move the control uh, to the left as it was, uh, you'll need to send negative CV into here. That's fun, isn't it? Yeah. So I'm sending a positive CV in here, so it's starting from low pass, pushing it into high pass and then coming back down. Uh, and we can also do it for taps, of course, as well. And we can introduce those additional rhythmically related taps as we go. Which is very cool. Do bear in mind that in hyperspace mode, however, um, whatever you've left the set at on the slider will be applied continuously. Uh, so uh, if you're messing around with the CV, make sure that you set the slider back to where you want it to be in a static way um, before you move on to the next CV uh, location. Yeah. Very cool. And this brings us on to the final CV input, which is the control input, which allows us to do assignable control of many different things. So uh, let's take a look through what all of those things are. So the assignable control on uh, Basil works in the same way as it does on pizza. Uh, you press and hold this button down here until things start flashing and then by pressing different buttons or button combinations you move between uh, different uh, destinations for the assignable control. Uh, the assignable control uh, has an attenuverter here with the control knob and if there's nothing plugged into the control voltage, uh, then this just acts as a fixed voltage range that we can move uh, parameters around with. Uh, so let's start by assigning to time, uh, and this does what you would expect. It very much duplicates what is happening on the delay knob when you have time selected. So we have a secondary control for it uh, on control here. Uh, the nice thing here, however, is that it does give us access to an attenuverter. So if we do want to try and do very small movements with an LFO, for example, we might find it a little bit easier on the control now. 
But again, we do have a better uh, control option for doing those smaller amounts. So tapping this button again gets us to stereo mode, which uh, gives us a secondary control over the stereo uh, control here. Uh, so if you just want to have the stereo control easily accessible, for example, while still having the delay control here, we can do that. But of course we can stick a, um, uh, we'll go for an LFO again in there and we can move that stereo delay amount around. Which is gonna get us this kind of stereo pitch smearing as we move that delay amount around. Which is quite nice. I think I'd prefer that to the bigger movements that you get for the main delay knob, actually. Yeah, it's cool. Very nice. But I guess the main one here um, that is probably most interesting uh, when it comes to doing those smaller modulations is that third press here where fine is flashing. So now we have CV control over the fine amount, which is going to allow us to be a lot more granular with what we're doing. So if I can plump into the control here now. It's a lot easy, a lot easier to dial in those sort of chorusy. small movements to get our chorus and flange going on or these sort of smaller delay movements Uh, this might be nice with a smooth random source as well to get that kind of more warbly thing going on. Sort of broken tape vibes going on. Uh, so that's all for uh, this button here. Press it again and just brings us back around to time. Uh, so let's go over to this here. So when these top two are lit, uh, what we're getting is control over our dry wet. So that's dry. Put that in the middle, it's wherever this is currently set and then full wet over at the end there. And we can use this to, um, for example, fade our delay sound in and out. Uh, so if I take an LFO here, So we can add this kind of tremolo onto the delay with a bit of diffusion as well. We kind of get that sort of tremolo-y reverb thing, which is really nice actually. Let me go even faster. an extra kind of modulation over it. Which is very nice, actually. I guess we could even do that at uh, an audio rate if we wanted to. To kind of ring modulate our reverb. So that's just um, a triangle wave going in there.
yeah, we can ring modulate our reverb there, which is quite, uh, delay rather there, which is quite cool. So tap this again, and this should give us external control over our feedback on top of obviously the feedback control that we already have. So uh, yeah, if we very much what we had uh, with our feedback control already, uh, but now uh, we do have an attenuator, so we can take a. Uh, positive unipolar CV and send it into that ping pong feedback instead. Which you saw? So pressing this one again. Uh, this is uh, really, really fun. So this is uh, CV control over all of the different speed ranges that we have here. So let me just take out the um, LFO for a second and give us a bit more feedback so we can what's going on. So you can see that at either rain side of the range here, I've got direct access to those different speed modes, which is really, really cool. Uh, and if we put an LFO in there and give it the beans, we're immediately into that beautiful glitchy place. I mean, I can just do this for hours. And remember, this is just one uh, really, really basic sequence that's going in here as well. And perhaps if we also add a, uh, a sync signal to there. get into that real glitchy territory. We go into ping pong mode. Yeah, I mean Fantastic. Yeah, um, I have to admit, um, this is probably what I've spent more time doing with Bas uh, with Basil uh, more than anything else. Because why wouldn't you? Okay. <laughs> we should probably move on to the next one there. Uh, so next up on this button, um, it does give us access to the wet dry again, but when we press it again uh, and the feedback, uh, it does get us to some additional um, settings here. And the first one is uh, freeze. Now, uh, freeze allows us to remotely engage the freeze mode. Uh, pretty easy to hear if we speed up the sequence a bit. Uh, okay, so the uh, control knob here doesn't do anything, uh, although we do need to have it turned up. Uh, instead, uh, what we want to do is plug a gate into the control here. And if we turn uh, this sign mode off, you'll be able to see a bit more clearly. We can see that we're freezing parts of the buffer. Uh, remotely using a gate. It's a shame that we can't do this 
and also have the CV control over the speed control at the same time because this is where the big glitches live, I think. So that's a shame. Yes, this does allow us to um, freeze what's in the buffer, which also kind of makes this playable. It'd be interesting to try this with the uh, gate from a, uh, a keyboard controller or another sequencer, actually. Cool, yep. Yeah. So that gives us external control of uh, the gate mode. Uh, just coming back into a sign here. Uh, pressing it again it gives us access to lo-fi mode. Uh, so let's make sure we can hear what lo-fi mode is doing by going into one of the longer delay ranges. So there's our alias filter engaged and then we can turn up the control. Again, we could stick a, um, a gate here so it was switching between those modes. That's quite nice. So finally on the uh, control modes here, we can also come down to our space modes and this allows us to get access to all of the control over the space modes that we like. Now, a key reason to do this, I think, in a lot of cases, leaving aside the fact that we can modulate it, is this gives us two hands-on controls for the space modes at once. So if I have this assigned to blur um, and then come out of a sign here and have space mode set to filter, I now have control over blur and filter at the same time. But we can of course modulate things uh, here as well. We've kind of already heard th stuff get modulated um, uh, with the space control anyway. The difference being here that we do have the attenuator so we can apply negative modulation a little bit more easily with a unipolar modulation source. The final uh, mode here, however, once we've cycled through all of these, when all of our friends light up here, is control over all three space modes all at once, which is quite a lot of fun. Because you're getting quite large changes over the sound all at once. So here we're adding in our additional taps, we're blurring uh, inside the feedback loop, and also uh, high passing and going the other way. We're introducing a different set of taps, darkening it with the low pass filter and putting the blur um, ahead of the delay line. So sticking a slow uh, bipolar LFO in there. Turning up the attenuator might be quite a lot of fun. That's not what I wanted, that's, uh, that's the wrong modulation source. That's the sync control, let's try that. Quite lovely. Lo fi on. a huge amount of movement inside that ambience just from a single modulation source. And we can synchronize it. And we could 
send some random voltage into the delay time. <laughs> Lovely stuff. Okay, I think that's um, all of the controls. So let's put some uh, patches together so we can see uh, it in a bit more context. <laughs> Chorus, flanger and vibrato are all effects which are essentially created in the same basic way. You take a short delay and then you mix it in with your dry signal and then you modulate the delay time a bit. That's basically how you do it. The nuance of which one you're going to get is all a function of how short the initial delay is, the dry wet mix and also feedback. So here I've got a guitar loop and at the moment we're just hearing the dry signal. And if I just go sort of 50-50 with Basil, you'll hear that we're just getting a kind of doubling. So it's a really, really short slap back delay. You can kind of hear that it, there's two attacks to every note, but it's, it, it's short, but sort of a delay rather than say, getting into the, the comb filtering side of things. So I've got um, something plugged into my control input here, which is a uh, just a straight triangle LFO from Stages. And the control is routed to the fine control on Basil. We could route it just straight to time, but you'd have to be more gentle with the attenuator if we did that. So if I introduce modulation to this kind of doubling effect, I start to get that chorus sound. Very cool. Now how this chorus sound uh, kind of uh, sounds at a fundamental level is a, uh, a combination of the initial delay time so we can make it maybe a little bit shorter and still get kind of a tighter chorus sound rather than a seasick one. Of course the depth of the modulation is going to make things sound more or less seasick. And the speed of our LFO of course, so if I go faster Generally with faster, you want to go less deep modulation. Lovely. Or we can go very slow, which usually means we can go much deeper with modulation. We kind of get that sort of long tonal change instead. The other way that we could make this kind of sound a bit deeper rather than just increasing the, uh, the amount of modulation is to bring in a bit of feedback as well that will also just thicken things up a little bit, make things a bit swirlier. If we want to go from chorus to flanger, all we do is we make our delay time shorter. So we get into that kind of comb filtering area. You can kind of hear that kind of more swooshy sound that's going on there. And generally with flange, we also introduce a bit of feedback as well to get some of that aeroplane swoosh. And if we want to go from flanger to vibrato, all we do is go 100% wet and turn down our feedback, of course. So three sort of discrete effect types, but they're all achieved in very much the same sort of way. But of course, we've got quite a lot more here that we've not really touched on Basil. So let's explore some of that a little bit. So I'll just come back to more of a chorusy sound. I 
And the first thing that I want to do is I want to come into the stereo mode here. This is going to offset the delay time on the left and right, but we'll still be modulating them. And this is, um, well, it's just lovely. I love stereo chorus. And if we make our time tighter, we get into our stereo flange instead. Very nice. We can also do stereo vibrato actually, which kind of sounds like a kind of hollow chorus kind of thing. Might still be useful. Now there is actually a second way that we could um, affect the stereo image using uh, Basil, and that is to take our feedback to the left, which is going to give us our ping pong delay, uh, which is also going to give us stereo spread, but a kind of different vibe. A, because we're introducing feedback, but also the widening isn't quite as extreme, I don't think. We can combine the two. Yeah. Okay, um, probably stick with a, a stereo kind of vibe here. Um, let's talk about what we can do on the space control for chorus as well. So. One of the uh, main ways that you can affect the character of a chorus is to change how bright or dark the delays are, which of course we can do directly with the filter control here. So uh, if I turn the filter up, we're going to high pass our delay and it's going to sort of brighten the chorus and kind of move it out of the way of the main sound a little bit. Really, really hi-fi kind of sound. And because we've kind of moved it out of the way of the main sound, we can also be a bit more extreme with the amounts without it sounding so seasick. Like if I come back to without the high pass, that's you know getting into kind of seasick territory. We can go the other way as well, we can make things darker. Kind of soupier, and again, you can you can kind of get more extreme with the with the filtering happening that way as well. Again, just moving it out of the way of the clean sound uh, is a good way of being able to get things more extreme. Uh, the taps is really interesting for for chorus sounds as well. Because this is going to introduce smaller delays in between um, uh, the, the dry sound and the main delay sound, which is going to thicken up the sound. But also because those other delays are shorter, we're going to mix chorus and flanging together a little bit to get this really rich sound. Super rich. Bring some feedback there. To kind of get that that uh, hybrid delay and uh, flange, sorry, chorus and flange going on there. We can even probably make our main delay time even longer and get some slap back happening as well, some straight up doubling. But still maintain flanging and chorus. Really super thick sounding. So cool. And finally we've got blur, which is our diffusion on the delay, which is not something you tend to see on choruses so much. But you know, why not? Got the pre-blur or the post-blur. Bit of feedback to make it more obvious. Again, really, really cool. And we can combine these. Uh, 
So maybe high pass it a little bit, bring in some extra taps. And we're just into a place which you just could not do with a standard chorus pedal. I love chorus. I want to run my guitar through this normally. Yeah. Kind of pseudo chorus, reverb, slap back delay, flange. Gorgeous. Yeah, so Basil makes a fantastic chorus flanger vibrato. Really, really fantastic. If you look at the marketing and even the manual for Basil, you'll notice that Basil seems to try and avoid calling it a delay module. Um, I think uh, preferring the term time based effect or something like that. And I guess the reason for doing that is that if you hear delay module, you kind of think echo. And Basil, because of its flexibility, can do a lot more than just echo. But we probably shouldn't overlook the fact that it can also do echo really nicely. So I've got a simple little sequence here, just hearing it dry at the moment. And I've got Basil set up a particular way. Um, so we'll just fade in the delay here. So I've got it set up to do ping pong delay with the feedback anti-clockwise. Um, I've got the fine control set to offset it from sort of a standard uh, delay time, but it is uh, synchronized, so it will sort of uh, repeat nicely with the sequence that's going into it. Uh, other than that, um, uh, oh yeah, I've got it on half mode rather than on full mode, which just on its own sort of, uh, because of the lower sample rate, you get that sort of, um, low pass thing going on there, slight smearing to the sound that I just find nice to my ears. I pretty much always use it in at least half mode for just straight up echoes, lower in some cases. But let's see what else we can do to make this um, just that little bit more special. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to plug something into the control, which is a smooth random LFO. And the control at the moment is assigned to the fine control, so sort of small changes to the delay time. And it's a smooth random rather than a straight sort of modulation, so we're going to try and destabilize the delay rather than sort of do an obvious sort of um, uh, sort of chorusing kind of sound, more like a, I guess, um, like a wow and flutter kind of thing going on. So we'll just turn this up a little bit until we hear it destabilize. I'm looking for like seasick. Just a little bit of destabilization and sort of uh, chorusing. Slightly too much, just needs a tiny amount. Yeah. Let me just slow it down a little bit. So the next thing we can do to introduce a bit more rhythmic interest is to turn up the taps amount so we get those additional delay taps in here. Okay, I've almost got a triplet feel in there because of how the fine control is set. And now what I'd like to do is just smear those delays just a little bit more. I still want to hear the delays as delays, but with a bit of the blur control on. So we'll switch up to blur mode. And we'll delay in the feedback. So those first few delays are like obviously still delays, but as things uh, go into the feedback loop and go around a few more times, it smears out and becomes like a more reverby bed. Set this over to 
filter mode. And I'm just going to modulate the filter a little bit as well. Reduce how much it's doing. It's almost like there's um, string parts in the background there because that diffused repeat on the left hand side. You kind of hear it better. So <laughs> it can do delays, believe it or not, <laughs> really, really nicely. That's nice. Wobble things a bit more. Right, so this is probably not the main reason to buy a battle, but it's worth noting that it does a really good job at low firefying. Low firefying? Yeah, we'll go with that. Low firefying a signal. So I've got drum loop going in, you're just hearing the dry at the moment. I've got the delay time set to its uh, smallest, so almost no delay at all. Uh, so if we swoop across to where there's a slight tonal change just because the delay lines sound different, but essentially the, the same clean signal that goes in. If we set our speed uh, to half here, you can hear that we have that sort of disappearing uh, top end a little bit. If we go into the long range mode and go as long as possible, we start getting very dark with that digital grip, but we can turn off the anti-aliasing filters and now we've got a nicely digitized lo-fi version of our of our input, which we can now mess with, of course. We can add a little bit of feedback to get some of that comb filtery. Vibe going on there. That's nice. That's picking that kick drum out real nice. And of course we could start to filter that if we wanted to. Introduce taps, which will make things a bit more comb filtery. That's cool. And if we introduce the blur, then obviously we're going to be getting into kind of reverby kind of sounds as well. I like that with the taps on. Fills that down a bit. A little more feedback. Making that kick real big. Love that. That's what we started with. That's actually super cool. <laughs> As if we send the feedback ping pong. That's weird. So yeah, there's going to be a tiny bit of delay on this signal, of course, a little bit of latency if you like, but it's going to be micro, micro, um, to the point where it's basically going to make no difference to the timing of a track. Yeah, 
a cool process of that kind of thing. Neat. Comb filtering is a phenomenon where you take a signal and you delay it by a very, very tiny amount. And then when you mix those two signals back together, there will be a phase relationship between certain frequencies within those uh, signals. And certain frequencies will therefore be um, either boosted because they're reinforced or attenuated because there's phase cancellation between them. If you look at uh, that signal in a spectrogram, you'll see that certain frequencies are basically sort of cut out like the teeth of a comb, which is where we get the name from. There's some maths you can do to work out what frequencies are going to be attenuated based upon the delay time. Not interested in that necessarily today, but uh, let's take a listen to what that sounds like when you do it with Basil. So I've got drum loop here, and I've got Basil set up with a very short delay time. And if I mix that very, very small delay time in with the original signal, you hear this very characteristic hollowing out of the sound that you get with comb filtering. Now if we change the delay time, we change the phase relationship and we're going to change which frequencies are being cut out. Now, um, you might be thinking, possibly, doesn't this sound a bit like a flanger? And you're right, that's basically how a flanger uh, operates. Now, one thing that you can do with um, comb filters is introduce feedback to further reinforce that relationship between those frequencies that are being attenuated or boosted. Uh, and you'll start to get this kind of ringing thing happening. It becomes quite tonal. And if we move that delay time, we get a different set of ringing happening. What's fun with Basil is that because the delay time or the delay um, CV input is volts per octave, if we put a volts per octave pitched sequence in there, <laughs> we can use this comb filtering to put a melody on top of. whatever signal's going in there. Now we can take um, some of the other features of Basil and start to do some other stuff to this. So for example, we can introduce some stereo movement and get this sort of stereo harmonized comb filtering. <laughs> and we can start messing with other parameters on here as well, like the filter, for example. sort of make that effect less obvious or more pingy. The blur also does interesting things. Okay, 
get into that kind of reverb space, not really comb filtering so much, but with that comb filtering feel on the top of it. If we mess with the speed controls, we're going to get doubling and halving of the frequencies involved. Now, um, what we've got here is kind of a pseudo carpless strong kind of thing going on here. So I can put in something that's less sort of obvious, uh, obviously um, musical into there, so just like bursts of noise instead. It gets a little bit higher. fully work for that. Of course, if we take the feedback all the way up, depending on how we have other things set. kind of get into a carpet of strong kind of space. Playing with really short delay times and getting into that comb filtering space is actually really, really uh, interesting and some unique sounds to be found there. This patch here is uh, inspired by and pays homage to a video that Vakla from Bastille put out years ago now on the uh, Bastille time uh, delay unit, which I think it's safe to say uh, Basil draws some influence from. And that video was all about destructive looping, which was where uh, Vaklov was using the time as a looper. So the delay buffer was set up to loop whatever was put into the delay buffer. But as you put more things in or you affected parameters on the time unit, you would destructively change what was currently inside that uh, delay buffer, uh, evolving the um, performance as you went along. And that's kind of what I've tried to set up here. So what you're hearing at the moment is a kick drum, which is just coming from Beehive Platts, uh, just keeping time. Everything else you're hearing is what's currently sat inside Basil's uh, delay buffer. The way I have Basil set up here is that I've synchronized it from PAMS running at the same rate as the kick drum, or rather it's running at quarter notes, I think, versus the kick drum, but it's synchronized. And I've set up the uh, delay time so that I'm uh, getting basically two bars of uh, of loop. I've set the feedback to be in ping pong mode because that essentially doubles the amount of time that we have if you're using just the mono output because you're going from one delay buffer into the other delay buffer and back so you're essentially doubling your time. I've got the range set to its absolute longest which is why we're getting all this kind of digital grit and to uh, emphasize that digital grit because I like it I've, I've turned on the lo-fi mode here and otherwise I've basically got a, a, a couple of ways I can put things into that buffer I can tap um, uh, the uh, MMI here to put either some noise in or um, something from uh, pizza here And then on uh, Akita here, on the last two sliders, I've got uh, some other little sounds. Also got rings and just uh, an oscillator going. Uh, 
and uh, that's all running through MFX just for some reverb by the way. Um, so once you've got these things going on inside the, uh, uh, the, the delay buffers you've got a couple of different ways you can then mess with them. So um, if we want to kind of erase a section of it we can bring the feedback down for that section. Then when we come back around we should hear there's a bit of a gap going on in there, yep. And we can put something else in there. Uh, but anything else that we uh, now affect on uh, Battle is also going to uh, affect what's going on. You can also hear that we're starting to get some some distortion in there because we're overdriving that feedback line. We can turn the feedback down a little bit to try and temper that, but it's kind of part of the fun. So I've got the um, space mode here set to filter. So if we put filter sweeps into the delay line, we're also going to be recording them into our loop, if you like. thing happening in there. Once again, some of that ringing from the uh, uh, lack of the anti-aliasing filter. If I just pop some more things in there here. Uh, we can do other things like use the taps control. Oh, hang on, I just need to <laughs> got the filter turned down, so we're losing all of our top in there. So using taps, we can throw in some um, extra taps, which give us essentially extra notes in there. Or we can start to blur what's in the buffer as well smoothing everything out. Giving us more space to put new things in. And we can build up and destroy loops over time. And put samples in here or anything else that we like. Unless we put louder things and more kind of force the other stuff out of existence as well. And it's a great way to build up loops or textures that we can evolve over time and make concrete changes to. Yeah, it's just a really fun way to spend some time with uh, with Basil. <laughs> 